Question 6. Can you share a brief history of Thoth and his lineage? I would love a chart for this. Uh, so the Emerald Tablets are said to be 35,000 years old. So we're not just going back halfway through the last procession of equinoxes to about 12,500 years ago, 10,500 BC roughly. We're going another procession of equinoxes again, which is 26,000, 25,000 under 20 years. So with these kind of beings like Thoth, Thoth is in the template said to be of the Atlantean beings, okay? Now those kind of beings are from different star systems. They don't age the way we age because part of their growth, what they, they call gods, lesser gods, greater gods, there's all these types of beings that are very awake in certain areas or they work in other levels. Um, they can flow in and out of time um, very easily. And it's not like you can just call them on for personal favors because it's like, for example, if you worked at a, an automotive plant, you know, you need to get some you know, parts for a car or a truck. You just don't go up you know, to the um, chief CEO. You, you gotta go work up the line. So it's about energy and access at the right areas. So the line of Thoth goes right through Egypt, all right? He's a, a big participant. It is said that he came from Atlantis and the pyramids were already there. That's what it feels like was in the, um, the original text. Now, there are other later lines of different thought, Enochian and Coptic scripts. There is so much to get into, but that line is the pharaohic line of Egypt. Now, at around the time of the... Um, the, uh, the great migration or out of Egypt, as it were, we have, um, you know, it, it's, that's sort of the key to where Scotland and Ireland have a lot of these races uh, come through. They have that, that kind of heritage also around the Black Sea. You also have the Basque of Spain, um, many others. You have the Yitzidi and that in the Middle East as well. You have a look at their eyes, their color, and their intelligence. They're a different kind of being. They don't seem to suit what are the natives around those places. The line of Thoth goes right back, as far as I know, from Samaria as well, because you have, I suppose the easiest way to explain it from the Anunnaki point of view is Anu, the great sky god, and then that lineage there that comes out of there. So you have Ninurta, Ninkasheg, uh, Enki and Lil and those that, that tribe but it, it would take me just literally days to show you how long that line goes in but it is a, that that bloodline goes right through to a lot of people that are written off out of time well I said they didn't exist in that so right down through um, your Egyptian pharaohic lines and then into most parts of Europe as well but there's also another aspect where they said about the Aryan tribes migrated out of Russia. This is in the great Zoroastrian text as well. And they came down and influenced, they, they came into Iran, modern day Ur, Iran. This is what we're saying about the planet Uranus. There's a lot of keys in that there. And then of course, they were said to be, when I was studying, they invaded India and said, Hang on, you're saying they're invaded. I can't find any information on this, but someone said that they had invaded in this text. So I find out, oh, they didn't invade. They're actually there in the ancient, most ancient, ancient sacred text of India, way before the aspects of Hinduism and the great Vendidads and the Vedas, oh, many of these different texts. It's so big to get into. So you have different lineages of different gods and goddesses and their lines. And remember, these beings are immortal. And that's what the Philosopher's Stone is about, discovering your immortality. And it's not like the average person is just going to discover it tomorrow. It's a lot of work that you have to do, and it usually takes cycles. You know, Once again, if you go to Tibet and places like that, certain parts of China and uh, different sacred places in India, they, they attain the rainbow body or the light body or, or what we call the, um, 
the body of immortality, you know, which is when one person is in a space of light that they can literally push their hand into solid granite or solid stone, or they can move energy, you know, through telekinesis because they've evolved their pineal and pituitary gland to the point that they that they can you know, activate and move, you know, atomic structure. And it's all just basically, it's just science. You just flip the speed or flip the spin of atoms from one area into another. So it's a particle and a wave at the same time. You just move it from more into wave or more into particle. When you understand that, it's one of the great paradoxes. It's not like you're going to get this and unless you've had this sort of experience in a previous cycle or you've studied a lot of this sort of energy. So that line of thought has a lot of knowledge around it. And once again, those big staff carrying and, and, and scepter carrying people of many of the different um, uh, kingly lines and queenly lines on the planet, they carry this knowledge. And many of the, the, the cultures around the world had connections with a lot of the different Egyptians. There was a lot of different exploration that happened. It's just simply not put in the history books. That's it. And we've had a lot of change of history since the Second World War. A lot of the, the uh, great histories and heritage were written out of that. And even before that, in the, in the, the First World War. So when I was learning, I found about a lot of sacred books that are very, very hard to access. You just don't get them anymore. So I hope that explains your question. The line of Thoth has been and always been. That's why he's called Thoth, Hermes Thoth, Trismegistus of the Thriceborn. He's the one that influences the Merlins and the, um, the, the, the line of Moses, as it were. He'd come back and make things happen or, or visit for a particular purpose as it were. So that line is, is very, very ancient. And even on the scope of my, my understanding. But you can access certain energies of, of the outer stars and they'll, they'll let the knowledge just flow through you. But it's, it's not like it's easy to explain in the 3D, that's for sure. Thank you.